Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to RPG Basics, part 28. And this is another Game Maker tutorial, so you can be excited. It's not a Godot tutorial. And I'm going to do more Godots, so if you are wanting a Godot tutorial, don't worry. I'm going to show you guys how to set up a better way to control the sprites, especially in a system that takes for directions or more directions. I'm going to show you how you can set up the system to where it could take eight directions. It is really easy to use. There's just an initial setup in the create event and then for the rest of the and then the step event and then in all of your different states you can just set simple variables like movement and facing to get the correct sprite you need. So it's a really cool system. I don't want to take all the credit for it because Ryan from RM2K Dev is the one who actually came up with this idea. So be sure and check out his channel. Maybe I'll leave a le link in the description to, he doesn't actually have a video on this, but he's the one that initially showed it to me. So credit goes to him. So let me show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your player objects right here and go into the create event and actually. I say that's the first thing you want to do, but in reality, the first thing you want to do is actually open up the macros. So go to the default macros here, and we should have right, up, left, and down. Now, if you remember, these macros are set up for the different directions that we can face, that our character can face in the game. And it's really useful to have a variable that stores the direction the player is currently facing. Now, if you want to set this to an eight direction, you're going to have to obviously have eight of these instead of four. And you'll need like right, left, and, sorry, not right, left, right up, uh, right down, left up and left down as well. And you'll want to set those up. So the way I've got them set up is right is zero, up is one, left is two, and down is three. If you were going to add an eight directions, you would want right to be zero, right up to be one, up to be two, to be two, and then you'll want to follow in that same counterclockwise order uh, all the way around in every direction. Okay. Now, what we're going to do though, we're going to leave it at four, but we're going to add a new some new macros here. We're going to add one called running or run. Yeah, we could name this one move actually. And we'll just name it. We'll just have it be zero. And then we'll have another one be attack. And this one will be one. So we've got move and we've got attack. We just need these two more macros right here. Press OK. Now we need to do the setup in the player's create event. So we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it sprite and this variable is going to be a two-dimensional array. Now a two-dimensional array is kind of like if you've ever played battleships or a, or chess or checkers it's going to be a grid system where the first element is the rows or whatever and the second element is columns so it's a grid. So we're going to say sprite and uh, so a single array takes a single value inside like this. A, a two-dimensional array takes two values like this. You've got one value and another value, kind of like x and y coordinates inside of the grid, sort of. So we're going to do sprite. Now we're going to use the macros that we've set up. So we're going to say sprite right, right, for the facing the right direction and run, sorry, and move, which is the other macro we set up. So write and move is equal to sprite player right, because that's the one that we use for moving when we're facing right. Now we're going to say sprite up move equals sprite player up. Now remember, if you were going to do eight directions, you would do the same setup, but you would have, instead of up right here, you would have like right up, like that, and you would do sprite player right up. And go around in the same, in the same fashion that I am right now. Oops, I want to do undo, not save. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to type out that whole thing again apparently. So let's do up move equals sprite player up. There we go. Okay, sprite left move equals sprite player left and sprite down move equals sprite player down. Okay, so we have the moving sprite set up. So we're going to do create create the sprite array. And then we need to do some more here. So we're going to do sprite. And uh, we're going to do right again because we've got all the directions for moving. Now we need to get all the directions for attacking. So right attack equals sprite player attack right. Now you can see how this is going to go. So I'm just going to copy this down three more times so I don't have to type it out. And then I'm going to change this to up and this to left and this to down. And then I'm going to change these as well to up, left, and down. Now what's the benefit that we get from doing this setup like this because it's kind of a lot of typing, right? Well, the benefit is now when we set the sprite, we can set we can set our sprite index equal to one of these elements in the array. And we can do it based on the direction that the player is facing and which state they're in or which movement they're in. So we already have face right here and face is set to right. So we need to create another one and we're going to call this movement and it's going to be set equal to move. Sorry, uh, move the the macro. Now what we can do is come into the step event right here and we can say after the state sprite index equals sprite and then we just pass in the direction which is face right face the variable that we have direction we're facing and movement which is the variable that we have. So we're setting the sprite index equal to the corresponding sprite from that uh, two-dimensional array that we created based on the direction we're facing and the movement type we have which will be controlled inside of the states. So now we can go into the player's move state. So go to script move state and we can change quite a bit in here so let's see here okay so very first thing we want to do in the state is we want to set movement equal to move so movement equals move move the macro move okay and then we're already where are we getting the face I know we're getting it somewhere do we have that script we do right script get face instead of player or helper get face. So somewhere we're getting the face. Now remember that if you're doing eight directions instead of four directions, get face should not divide by 90, but it should divide by 45 instead of 90. And this should be equal to eight instead of four. If it's equal to eight, then face right. Uh, so there you go. That's how you change that. But getting the face literally just sets uh, our our face variable, right? Instead of movement, it just sets face equal to the correct uh, macro that we've created for the directions that we're facing. Now that we've set movement to move inside of here, we can take out this thing right here. This whole switch face. We don't need that anymore. We can take it out because inside of our step event now we're setting the sprite to whichever sprite we need based on what our movement variable and our face variable and here's where we're getting the face is right here we're getting the direction that we're facing okay so that should work let's double check and make sure that it did we should just leave the uh, animation stuff all the same so depending on that speed that we're moving the animation should be the same and you can see that even without that switch statement anymore, 
are running and moving automatically works. So that's really cool. It's just, you know, it knows that we need to be, because, because we're getting the face, if you look in the move state, because we're getting the direction that we're facing right here, where is it, get face? Because we're getting that, and we're also setting movement to move, inside of our step event now, it automatically knows which sprite to set it to, just magically. So super nice. Now we need to change it for attacking. So go into the attack state. Where's player states? Attack state. Okay. So we've got a similar thing in here where we've got if switch sprite index equals whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is a big hassle, right? This is a big deal uh, to switch through all of those, especially if you're doing eight directions. But now what we can do is we can just set movement movement equals attack instead of move because we're in the attack state so we just set it to attack and then uh, instead of doing this right here because this is a big complicated well I might leave this uh, except that we do need to change it instead of switching on the players sprite index uh, sprite index like this we need to do face face sorry the lowercase one and then this one would be down, this one would be up, this one would be right, and this one would be left. Okay, so I changed this as well. But we should be able to, how did, okay, yeah, that's right. Now we should be able to attack. Let's double check and make sure it works. Yep. We can attack now, and it faces the correct direction. And we got rid of those giant switch statements. Now all we have is this nice little uh, array that we set up in the create event. And then just this nice little one line in the step event. And the make sure you set the correct movement type inside of the step the different states. Now our dash state should also be a, uh, so movement inside of the dash state should also be move because that's the sprite we use inside of the dash state is the move. We wanna make sure that it uses that one. But the nice thing about this is that it separates the direction you're facing from the type of action that the sprite is taking. So the movement right here, this is the action that the sprite is taking right? The action is move. Inside of the attack state, the action is attack. And we can just set that and we can set it independent from the direction that we're facing. We can set the direction that we're facing somewhere else. We can set those independent from each other. And then our sprite index will just automatically be set to the correct sprite based on what the, the, the action that we're taking and the sprite and the direction that we're facing. It just magically does it. So really cool system. I wanted to show you guys how to do that. This is the system that I use in Grain War to set up the eight directions for the character. I use the same exact system. And I'm going to be showing you, a lot of people have requested monsters that face four directions instead of the slime that just faces the two directions. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that. And that's why I set up this system is to make that easier for when we create that monster. Uh, you guys will already understand the system. We can set it up for the monster and we'll create some sort of a monster that can run in four directions and a monster that can shoot projectiles as well to make things a little more easier. And I also want to add traps and stuff to this series. So I've got more videos planned on the way. I'm going to be releasing a video for sure every single Friday. So look out for a video every single Friday. That will be there for sure. I don't know what kind of video it will be, but generally I do want to do, I'm, I'm trying to do at least one RPG video uh, for this series a week because I know it's my most popular series. You guys all really like it and I enjoy doing it too. It's a fun series for me. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, be sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. Share it on Twitter and I will talk to you guys later.